doing a little bit of a late night video here. As you finish identifying the misplaced items, the elves come to you with another issue. For safety, the elves are divided into groups of three. Every elf carries a badge that identifies their group for efficiency. Within each group of the three elves, the badge is the only item type carrier. The badge is the only item type carried by all three elves. That is, if a group's badge is item type B, then all three elves will have that. I that all three elves will have an item B somewhere in their rucksack, and at most two of the elves will be carrying in any other type. The problem is that someone forgot to put this year's update authentic authenticity sticker on the badges. All these badges need to be pulled out of the rucksacks so that the new authenticity sticker can be attached. Additionally, nobody wrote down which item type corresponds to each group's badges. The only way to tell which item type is the right one is by finding the one item that item type that is common between all three L's in each group. Every set of three lines in your list corresponds to a single group, but each group can have a different badge item type. So in the above example, the first group's rucksacks are these first three lines, and the second group are these three lines. In the first group, the only item type that appears in all three rucksacks is lowercase r. This must be their badge. In the second group, their badge item type must be z. Priorities for these items must still be found to organize the sticker attachment effort. Here they are 18 r for the first group and 52 z for the second group. The sum of these is 70. Find the item type that corresponds to the badges of each three elves groups. What is the sum of the priorities of those item types? Okay. So very similar to the first problem, except we went from having a list of two separate strings to three strings. Um, so uh, a little bit more complicated. Uh, and then we need to find the common type for those three and then represent that score for those three. So our splitting becomes a little different um, because it's not just one line, it's three lines. Uh, but we can handle that and then the second part is um, our find match becomes a little bit more complicated. So there's a couple different approaches. Um, feeding in three lines, not a problem. We can split, 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 and walk through the slice and every three we pass to the function, string one, two, three. Um, that's fine. We already have a function that takes in two strings and tells you where they meet or they have the overlap. Previously we were splitting the string, but now we can just pass the first two. The problem is that we have a third string. So really the way that we would do this is for n number of strings, um, we could just create a, yeah, a another map. Um, I think that'll be fine for the number of records that we're dealing with. Let's take a look and see. We've only got 300 records. So that means we've got 100 comparisons to do. Um, I think the answer really here, while it may seem somewhat inefficient, uh, is just simply take our find match function and extend it. So right now, it only accepts two strings. Um, what I think we could do is we could we could create a slice of map of string or room uh, like we have here. Um, the counting is kind of irrelevant, but we can look at the set of strings that we have, and we can create all the maps except for the last one. 
so that if we only get two, that's fine. If we get three, fine. If we get 500, fine. Um, if we just create a single map, we could do counts, but the problem is that uh, you could coalesce the maps and throw them away, I guess, at the end. But you want to be careful because uh, you might end up with more than one character in a given string, and that could throw your whole calculation off. Calculation off. So I, I think I'm just going to iterate with what I've got here, and I'm going to use uh, something like this as our answer. And I'm going to do uh, unique, uh, man, variable names are always hard. Uh, we'll just, just call it counts. And it's going to be a slice of map of a room event. Now, if I was to do this, like, in my work environment, I would probably create some sort of struct for this. Um, I may rethink the way I would even approach this, but I, I think I like where this is going to head because um, now I can take the find match function and instead just for um, See, I, I really should use a for iterator here, like for i zero, i is less than length strings, what is it, i plus plus, something like that, it's been a while, um, and then some strings uh, minus two, so we're only going to create the number of maps, uh, one less than our total number of passed in. And what we're gonna then do is just kind of wrap everything I already uh, did to create um, the maps here. So, oh, oh geez. Okay, and then we can just do accounts um, uh, ooh. this becomes strings sub I. Okay. And then we can, after that map is created, counts equal to append counts M1. Okay. So now, now we've created all the maps leading up to the last string. Uh, and then we're going to do range of uh, we're going to do range of strings length strings minus one okay so that's what our limit is okay so that's basically saying hey just get the last string that we have right um, now this part so I guess I could have used the find map function and then wrap this for like find all match, but I feel like that might be somewhat inefficient. Um, what, what I want to do is basically is I could do like a go to, it might be the best thing here. Okay. Let's just talk about what I want to do. So, I want to look at all my counts, right? And I want to check to see if that rune exists in my count. And if it does, So, we 
yeah so what I want to do is I want to go back up to here so for any reason if if we don't see that character in any of the maps um, I want to jump back up to here and go to the next iteration if if we see it this isn't going to be a return anymore this is going to be like a go to line 55 but if if we get through all of these and we don't get a non-exist anywhere then that's when we're going to return r right so i haven't done this a whole lot in golang go to uh loop let's see here it's a terrible question yeah so you can label uh This is how all right, so I think I'm just going to call this main. Okay, so I've labeled this main. And so what this is going to do is if we meet this condition where that letter does not exist in a given map, it's going to say, hey, we don't see it. Let's go ahead and go up to the next one, and we're going to keep iterating. This will make sure that we're kind of efficient, that we're not going to run through extra maps that we don't need to. Um, but if we find it in the first one, we'll check the second one. If we see it in the second one, we'll check the third, et cetera, et cetera. The interesting thing about what I just did here is um, the behavior theoretically should not change, although it did. Okay, let's look at our find match function. So is it returning? Okay. Let's see what we did wrong. So length the strings minus two. Let's run this test again. Turning H. Okay. Let's see.
Okay, so I think what? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a couple of breakpoints real quick. I think what's happening is that what I'm mapping on here is not what I'm expecting. Uh, so we'll just run the debugger. So the debugger is pretty cool. Um, it allows us to set breakpoints and get an idea of the data that's being passed in. All right, so you can see here there are two strings being passed in. That's good. And let's we're going to go ahead and just run this all the way forward. And we're going to take a look and see what our counts looks like. Our counts does not have anything in it. Okay. Ah. <laughs> That's beautiful. Well, so what's happening here, and this is interesting, um, there was there was not a map. Nothing was in counts to range in. And my default response was, hey, if you don't go back, assume we're good. So that's kind of like an issue. Um, and so what I'm going to do is say if length of counts uh, equals zero, return uh, zero. We're just going to return zero. That'll just kind of not give me confusing data. It, it doesn't make the function right yet, but it, but it removes confusion. So let's go to, let's go ahead and run debug again. I, I think I see the problem, but I'm going to look at it in the debugger to give some idea. So our length of our strings is two. And so we're saying I is zero. And then we're saying I is less than length of strings minus two. And the problem is that I is zero. And if we do a length of strings minus two, it is also zero. Um, and then I plus plus. So since we're starting at zero, we will never qualify to enter into here um, because we're not less than zero. And then, so I can solve this in a couple different ways. Uh, I'm just going to do a less than or equal, and then this will work. Or it won't. It's not often that I do a four iterator like this. I may, I may have my logic off. Let's see here. We're going to run this in debug again. And we'll step through this. Good. Good. That should be fine. Okay, let's let's inspect counts now. All right, counts as a single map of rune which we want. And so here we go. That's not true. Okay. So 
So what rune are we on? Run rune 104. Go to main. Ah, so it's, it's, it, I think I have to go to the wrong, I don't use go to's a whole lot. Um, so, Yeah, no, okay. Hmm. So it's not going to iterate to the next range for me. Hmm. Yeah, so I think what's happening here is just that um we're we're reinitiating the for loop, which is not exactly what I want to do, but that's okay. This is we can fix this pretty easily. So um instead of spending a whole lot of time on it, um instead of using a for range, we're gonna go with another for loop here. And we're going to simply say, uh, yeah. Minus one. Okay, perfect. And then, so, uh, man, that's a mouthful. Let's, um, let's do this. Uh, Let's say test string is, we'll call it TS and TS minus one, and then um, TS sub I, okay. Um, oh. I ruin this up. Yeah. All right. So here's how we're going to solve um, the problem. We don't need this, and we do need this. Okay. So here's how we're going to solve the problem. We're, does this work without? What are we complain about here? Value in loop condition never changes the loop. Hmm. Okay. Um, so we're going to I think this is going to work. I think it was because I was using the range. Okay. It's not working. So, no, 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 no. Yeah, so we gotta, we gotta set I outside. Okay. Yeah, that's a little, little bit more ugly, but okay. Well, we're fine. I, I bit off a little bit more than. I wanted to chew here, um, but that's okay. So, uh, what this means is that we're gonna have to uh, iterate ourselves um, on this, which is okay. And really, we, we really care about iteration if and only if we fail, because, um, but we'll, 
Well, uh, let me look at this for a second. So if it doesn't exist, yeah, we go to main. Otherwise, we're going to return. There's really no point in that being there. Okay. Maybe we get it now. Um, no. Still zero. Okay. I equals zero for I is less than length of TS minus one, which we are. Okay. So if my rune doesn't exist, I plus plus go to main. All right. Well, at least it's finishing. Let's take a look and see what's going on here. All right. Uh, we know that's working, so we're going to skip past that. We'll go ahead and check counts. Counts has data. Okay, let's skip in our first set. Okay, great. Okay. Checking it again. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see the problem. P's at the end, and this needs to just be length because it's less than. So we're going to get to P, and then we're going to iterate out at the length. All right, this is this is why we use four range loops generally. Okay, that's done. So test total score, that's done. Awesome. And test score. Yeah, we can run through these. Um, Oh, so now uh, I've extended the functionality, right? And that's kind of why I took this approach. It took a little bit longer, um, but I wanted to do something where this became reusable and it might have some use case in, in the future. So what are we going to do now? Well, there's going to be a difference in how we do total score. So we're going to call total score two. And... Um, So uh, we'll, do, we'll do it this way, count zero and uh, yeah. So, and we'll, we'll call this uh, I lines, uh, which is a string. And we're gonna say um, I lines, no, 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 no. What, what am I doing? Yeah, we don't need to do that. Um, hmm. And so what we're going to do is we're going to call lines sub i, i plus three, uh, dot, dot, dot. Um, I'm not super excited about this, but we're just going to run with it for right now. Okay. That's the problem. So AOC two. Okay. 
Okay, so we're going to say i i plus 2 Okay, so lines i, i plus 2, i plus 3, yeah, okay, so, test all score, That's total score two. Total score two. And our input is this followed by this. Is that the same six inputs? MDW, MDW, yep. So our score should be 70. Um, I anticipate that my problem is going to be inside here and over here and we're going to debug it. Oh, okay. I always forget whether or not this is length or index position, and it gets me almost every single time. Uh, so the issue was we were only including two originally, so it was capturing a different character. Now we're including three. So if we come back here to day three, and we go back up in our execute, uh, we can uh, example two and we can change this to total score two uh, and AOC two. So, if we run this, 25, 10. Cool. So that concludes day number three of Advent of Code of the year 2022. Again, we're getting prepped for moving forward, um, trying to use a TDD approach. As you can see, it kind of helps uh, get us through some of the problems, kind of helps see the process that I go through. Uh, but again, uh, it, it's it really just is about the process being methodical. A um, few mistakes there. I haven't really used a go-to in a while, um, but that was really more of me achieving a centralized function that could determine one to n maps. Um, maybe 
at some future date, we'll come back and do some benchmarking with this and try out some other techniques. Um, maps, one way to do that. Uh, we could also, you know, take some other approaches. We could, we're effectively using ints here anyway with the runes, um, but there may be some other options there uh, that we can go through. So that concludes it for today. Uh, we'll, we'll pick up on day four here at some point in the future. Um, but y'all have a good night.